the evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones. Hi, my name is John Dunsworth. I like to play with cement and rocks. I have no idea why. I think it might have something to do with the fact that I'd like to leave a legacy. Maybe a little after I'm gone and people say, hey, who made that? There I am, still alive. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's because I want to get in shape. I'm, uh, I lost 20 pounds this summer doing stone work, so I feel physically able. I'm 66 years old, and I hope I have a couple more years. But this video is for somebody who wants to build something using cement. Now, it's a lot of hard work, but we're going to run through it step by step. Now, I don't know where you live, but I have a great environment that I work in. This is the Atlantic Ocean here. My dad gave 10 children in our family, he gave us all a piece of land 30 years ago. And most of my family built around here. There's my house up there. I built that myself. And there's stairways and rockways and stone walls. I used to stop every day on my way home from work in Halifax, put 15 stones in my trunk and come down and throw them in a pile and then on the weekend build stone walls. Slowly but surely, my friend. More slowly than anything else. First thing you're gonna need is cement. Yep, I've gone through maybe 80 or 100 bags of cement this summer. Now the first thing you really need is a cement mixer. Now you can do it by hand in a wheelbarrow, but it's an awful lot of work. This little beauty has been mine for maybe 15 years. It has mixed thousands of loads of cement. It's still faithful and wonderful, works perfect. Now you're gonna need some buckets. This is a great bucket. I got it at home hardware, I think seven or eight bucks. Three buckets of sand, one bucket of cement. How much water do you think should lubricate that mass? I'll tell you. Check this out. Less than a third of a bucket, believe it or not. And you take your bucket full of water and you put it in your machine. And then you go and get some sand. I think a raccoon went through here last night. You drive your truck to the quarry and they put on a ton of sand and you unload it. And you should unload it on a piece of plastic because it mixes in with the ground. And I think this is my 11th ton this year. And you mix the first bucket full of sand with the water and then you turn the machine on. But there's one thing you do before you do that. And that is you put on your safety glasses. If you're a lady and you want to keep your hands nice and soft, like me, then put a little hand cream on them and then put on your nice surgical gloves. Don't get the ones that you wash dishes with because they'll fall apart immediately. And now we're ready to mix them in. Next, you put in your cement and then mix it up. Now some people say, you're not putting your hands in that cement mixer. It'd be very difficult to, to get your hand caught in here. You'd have to try really hard. Now ah, that's beautiful. Now we get another bucket of sand. We'll be on our way. The mixture we use is three to one. Three buckets of sand, one bucket of cement. And again, we should make sure it's mixed in nice. Now you can see it's starting to thicken up here. That's what you want. You gotta have a real good wheelbarrow. My wife gave me this for Christmas about five years ago. Uh, maybe it's because I, I, I would like to make some kind of uh, order out of chaos, but not really, because most of my life I create chaos, you know, so. My mother remembers I came into the house once when I was two years old, saying, Mommy, I have rocks in my tummy. Turns out it was true, I had swallowed some rocks. But what I've been trying to do is secure the waterfront from the ravages of the Atlantic Ocean. Today is a red letter day. The end 
of an incredibly arduous task. When you consider that this barrel of cement might do this area, you can imagine how much it took to do all of this. I don't know if it's lucky stars or if it's your metabolism. I don't know what it is. But some days things just work wonderfully and some days it's a struggle. But if you persist through the struggle, it'll still get done. I've used this for 20 years. Just scarves you buy at the Sally Ann or something. Doctors laugh at me when I say my back pain comes from getting a cold back and lifting something. They say, ah, it's got nothing to do with the cold back. I'm convinced it does, so. This has saved many a back pain for Johnny Dunsmore. Now these big rocks over here, as you can guess, a big excavator can put those in, did a wonderful job. Now I've laid out what we need here. Let's start. Sometimes you have to really be imaginative to find your materials. You can always buy it. I, I have a certain language for rock picking. Scobbling is almost like taking a rock that you didn't own from a place that you don't have any permission to take them from. And I've got hundreds of those rocks from dump sites and things. You go for a little drive in the country and you'll see a barn that's fallen down. And you can walk over and if there's nice stones there, you can knock at the farmhouse next to it and she'll say, oh, help yourself, help yourself. And you do. Now, I don't use a level for much stuff, but what I like to do is have a semi straight line. Now, I like that, but how much cement are we wasting? Lots. So, we'll just mix some stones up. Stones that I got from the beach. It's always nice to have a gentle persuader for breaking rocks up if you need some more rocks. When you work with stone, a lot of times you get kind of sentimental about it. I don't know why. Like, sometimes you feel sorry for a stone that doesn't fit. <laughs> Same way as you feel sorry for people that don't fit. Well, some people you feel sorry for, but you hear about that BBC star and that coach in the Catholic Church. What's going on? Get a hobby. Do cement work. This is the last stone. Now there's one more step that we do, and that is to take a paintbrush and just smooth it out. Now, I very seldom have cement this wet, but it'll harden right up so that it'll be just as hard as that. By tomorrow, you can drive a truck over this. I have a very accurate case of low self-esteem, and by accomplishing things, it makes me feel better. It has its rewards. And one is, stand back and say, yeah. There's no set rule to it. Trial and error. It's good enough for the girl I go with. It's a John job. Do, 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 do. Now, I hope that this lasts until after I'm gone. I don't expect people are going to look at, you know, my stone wall and say, hey, John Dunsworth built that. I mean, they'll probably say something like, I think it was Jeff Dunsworth who built that. He's my son. Clean that old wheelbarrow. And you have to. I'm telling you, that cement will stick to anything. So, my dear friends, that's how you make something with granite and concrete. All around here, there are little things like right over there, there's a compass rose. I'm building a theater down here. You can see the big star in the middle there. This was three years ago to commemorate my daughter Molly being in a movie called Hobo with a Shotgun. And that's all sea glass that she collected right here from Bumbley Beach. You can do anything you like. You could build a little seat. You could have your lunch right here. This isn't finished yet. It's going to be nice here. You can have a nice cool drink. Or you can make a fire pit like right here. I always wanted to have a swimming pool. It was always part of my dream. I was the guy with the white picket fence and the two kids and beautiful wife. And now I have four kids, a beautiful wife, no picket fence, but I got my pool because I built it myself. Fill your boots, be imaginative as you like. I hope you
you try it? If you do, you feel just like me, young, happy. They call me Rachmaninoff. We're here again, John again. Or Rockman. Or Mr. Silly. Yeah, okay, nice.